another gorgeous evening on the north side of Chicago as Comcast Sportsnet brings you Cubs baseball. Tonight, the Cubs try to win their first home series of the season. It's the rubber match as they host the Colorado Rockies. Hi again, everyone, along with Jim Deshays. I'm Len Casper. A couple of blowouts in this series. The Cubs winning 9-1 to Monday, 9-4 the Rockies last night in a career night for the man they call Cargo. Oh, man, was he good last night. Carlos Gonzalez, first career five-hit game for him. Five out of five last night. Didn't matter who was on the mound for the Cubs or what kind of pitch they were throwing. He was on it. Change-up sliders, fastball. Carlos Gonzalez, a true five-tool player. Speed, power, good arm in the outfield. This kid can do it all. 27 years old, an all-star last year. He's going to make a whole bunch of those all-star teams before he is done. He's had two huge performances against the Cubs a few years ago in Colorado, hit for the cycle and finished it with a game-ending home run as well. And for the Rockies, two and three on this trip, they've scored one run combined in their three losses, 17 runs in their two wins. So it's been all or nothing. Coming up for the Cubs tonight, Darwin Barney tries to stay hot. He had three hits last night, even though the Cubs came up short. And it'll be John Garland and Jeff Samarja on the mound. Welcome back to Wrigley Field. We get set for the rubber game here tonight. Cubs are 0-2 and 4 in six series of at least two games at home. Their last home series win was against these Rockies in late August of last year, but they have a chance to take two of three as Jeff Samarja will face former Cup first round pick. John Garland and this is the Rockies Southwest starting lineup pretty similar to last night young Fowler Gonzalez to had a big night Helton Arenado Josh Rutledge at second the catcher tonight veteran your beat Tori Alba and again John Garland is the pitcher Cubs defensively uh, feature an outfield of Soriano, De Jesus, and Sheerholz left to right. Third to first on the infield is Valbuena back in there. Castro and Barney short and second. Rizzo is the first baseman. Deanna Navarro handles the catching chores tonight. He's behind the dish for 
Jeff Samarja, who's our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher. And he's pursuing a W right now. He won on opening day. He has not won since. One and five with a 370. So he certainly has pitched well enough to win since then on numerous occasions, but not uh, made his way into the winner's circle since the opener. Last time out, hit around pretty good. It was against Washington over in the nation's capital, allowed seven runs, five earned, and five innings of work. Jeff Kellogg, the crew chief, will work the plate tonight. Eric Cooper, Paul Schreiber, and Chad Fairchild will handle the bases. Another picture perfect weather day. A little cool with the wind. At least it was blowing in, not doing a whole lot at the moment. Good day to play, good day to pitch. Jeff is. Uh, we made one start against the Rockies. He's faced him out of the bullpen on a handful of occasions. He started once against them last year, August 24th. He threw the ball well, got a no decision, worked seven innings of three run baseball. Two of those earned, or runs, excuse me, were earned. So we're ready as Samarja will face. Eric Young Jr. He started the game with a double last night and would score the Rockies first run. It's kind of been the theme in the first two games early offense it was the Cubs in the opener scored five in the first two innings. The Rockies scored four in the first two yesterday. A wind and the pitch sinking fastball at 94 for a strike. Young hit his first home run of the year last night. It was a bomb straight away center field. Let's get the weather for you. 65 degrees and a slight breeze off the lake at four miles an hour. Driven out toward Soriano and he'll backpedal and make the catch on the warning track. So one out and it's Dexter Fowler. Another switch hitter. Rockies head home. They'll host the Giants. Starting tomorrow night when the Cubs will have an off day before they welcome in the Mets. And a pitch. 95 that time but off the outside corner. Comes with a chance to win this series with a win tonight. They have not won back to back series yet this year. So they took two out of three in Washington. If they could win this series, they'd have a little something going on prior to the weekend set with the Mets. High fly left field. Soriano will get another chance. And he's got it. Got a chance to tie a major league record. And the Mets are scuffling. They've lost five in a row. Will face nothing but righties the rest of this homestand, including Garland tonight. Harvey Hefner and G, the Mets this weekend. Flowing inside on Gonzalez, who went five for five, as we mentioned in the open, a career best five hits. And how about this note, courtesy of Elias? Mm hmm. In the 98 years the Cubs have played here at Wrigley Field, Gonzalez is the seventh opposing player to go five for five or better with two home runs. Albert Pujols was the last visiting player to do it. That was in 04, five for five with three home runs. It was a rare performance yeah. last night indeed. Yeah, and so the Cubs happy to see Pujols out of the division, and they would hate to see this guy traded to the Central. 
Shattered his bat as he pops out to Valbuena. And a 1 2 3 beginning for Samarja. The Cubs are coming up against John Garland. Cubs Southwest starting lineup written out by Dale Swain. De Jesus, Castro, and Rizzo at the top. Soriano, Sherholtz, Luis Valbuena. Good to see him back in the lineup. Deanna Navarro with the start behind the plate. We mentioned Barney's big night last night and Samarja, the pitcher. And veteran, oh, excuse me. Let's look at the defense first for the Rockies before we get to the pitcher. It's Gonzalez, Fowler, and Young, a very speedy outfield. For the Rockies, Arenado made a sparkling play last night at third. Tulowitzki and Rutledge cover the middle of the diamond. Helton, the veteran at first, and Yorvik Torrealba behind the plate. For John Garland, he's our Lexus starting pitcher for the Rockies tonight. Veteran right-hander, three and three, 483 his ERA. Garland pitches this season at 33 years of age. He's been around a good long while. 135 career wins. Six six two ten. And this is a matchup we've seen a lot. Well, we may not have, but a lot of people have. This is the 50th plate appearance for De Jesus against John Garland. He's at 239. And I was thinking, well, David's probably not faced a lot of other guys that often, but in fact, he has. Here's the 1 0. He has 83 plate appearances against Mark Burley. 58 against CC Sabathia, Justin Verlander, Cliff Lee, Jose Contreras. They've all faced DeJesus more than Garland. That's a lot of plate appearances. So there are no secrets. Fight. Nope. These players fully aware of each other's strengths and weaknesses. Garland, his strength is just he's been a guy who's always had good good command of his pitches, sinks the fastball. Got a whole lot going on. Cutter, sinker, curveball, slider, change, throw a splitter. All-star in 05. That one hit very deep out in the left center, and it will go. A leadoff homer. So the Cubs leadoff batters continue to do a ton of damage to start a game. Look like at two seam fastball a little run but it's up in the strike zone. One thing Garland won't do is overpower his fastball will sit 87 88 and take a look at our Ford home run replay and DeJesus stays on that running fastball. Drops it into the seat so early runs. That's been the theme. Here we go again. 85th career home run. It's his first here in the month of May.
Castro hits a sharp ground ball to Tulowitzki. One away. And Garland's on his game. He'll get a lot of ground ball outs. Three and one with a 352 here at Wrigley Field. He had a weird spring. He had a 2.25 ERA with the Mariners. He was a non-roster invitee, but then they cut him loose. So then he signed a minor league or a major league deal rather with the Rockies. Only made one spring training start. And so far it's been a pretty good pickup for the Rockies. Sinker misses 2 and 0 on Anthony Rizzo. And did not pitch last year after shoulder surgery. Swing and a miss. Changed him up. Good solid resume for Garland. 337 starts, a winning record. ERA a little on the high side. Deep left, Gonzalez back, and it's just below the basket. Rizzo missed a homer by maybe two feet. As it is, it's a one out double. Well, very much like the pitch that De Jesus hit out a running fastball up about uh, thigh high. Great approach by the left handed hitters to Jesus and Rizzo taking that pitch and hitting it hard the other way. Well, Homer and a double here in the first inning. These two teams are one and two Cubs and Rockies in extra base hits in the National League. Rockies had nine last night. All one on Soriano. Well, you can really see what the Rockies are doing with their starting pitching. I mean, you've talked about Garland, 33, has been around a long time, but he has not thrown 100 pitches in any of his starts. Five innings each of his last two times out, but at least six before that. So he has been pretty efficient. The Rockies just don't push their starters past 100. I think you know last year there was a big to do about the Rockies and the way they handled their pitching when they made that uh, shift in philosophy and, they, and then they weren't letting their starters go beyond 75 pitches. And a lot of young guys and there were health issues. There's also a strategy component. A yeah, third time through they did. Yeah and that's that, that, that's pretty consistent around baseball. Once a starting pitcher gets up over 90 pitches typically. You know the batting average against them goes up the run production against them goes up. Um, so it's understandable to kind of key on that. My issue is I, I think there are times you've got to be willing to let the manager just manage the game. Uh, and, and just trust what he sees on a, on a daily basis. Two and two as opposed to this edict you know we get to 100 pitches we're gone we're going to the bullpen. Some guys especially veteran guys sometimes it takes them a while to kind of get up to speed. Jesus with a leadoff homer. Rizzo doubled two batters later. So Torre Alba tapped the ground off the outside corner and then set up inside. Well, if the Rockies are going to do what they do, I, I wonder if they will consider at some point a four man rotation. There have been studies done. And there's a, a school of thought that is pitchers don't get hurt by working a lot in terms of you know coming back on short rest as opposed to throwing a lot of pitches and being fatigued in that game. Arenado looking at Rizzo and Anthony thought he was going to throw and he's tagged out. Jumped the gun just a little bit too much and Arenado caught him. Yeah, you know, Anthony, we talk a lot about this, and Pujols was this way too. But sluggers want to be daring base runners, and, and little guys want to hit home runs. And 
heads up play by Arenado and it's too high risk of a play by Anthony here. He's already in scoring position. And the advantage to be gained there isn't that great anyway. If Arenado throws up all the first base, Soriano's out and there's two outs and, and Anthony's standing on third base. A two out sack fly doesn't do a whole lot for you. So it'll be up to Sherholtz with Soriano now at first. But nobody will do it now, but do you think at some point the team would consider going to the four man rotation with the lower pitch counts? Because that's the other problem, yeah. too, JD, is you got a lot of fifth starters. If you go around baseball, some of the numbers are pretty ugly. Yeah, if you can eliminate that guy. So then what you do is probably add an, an extra arm to your bullpen. Go with the four man rotation. And then let's say you have a night where a guy is just mowing them down and you want to stick with him past 100, then that. That long guy in your pen maybe takes that start the next time around, or you work with off days. Yeah, that's you know, my my thinking uh, has always been that it's not even that one high pitch count game that becomes problematic. It's when you start to stockpile. If you got, a guy goes 130 pitches and he's 125 the next time, and you know, so what I would do is if, if, if a guy's really going good and you leave him out there for 125, 130 pitches, then next start, then maybe you, you, you make a move a little bit more quickly to the pen. But yes, I, I would not be surprised if down the road somebody did mess around with it because with all the studies they're doing now, I would suspect they'd do it in the minor leagues first, to see how it plays down there, and then maybe try it at the big league level. One and one on Sherholtz. And he swings and misses. One and two. Talking with somebody the other day, the way baseball works, when somebody does something completely out of the ordinary, a, a lot of the initial reaction is, what in the world are they doing? And a lot of eyes roll. But if it works, then what happens? Everyone says they're geniuses, and then everybody else does it. <laughs> and, and, and then they say, and we were thinking about it, too. <laughs> this isn't new. These guys are no smarter than we are. Marlins 1 2 on the inside corner to end the inning. Good news the Cubs got a leadoff homer from De Jesus and lead 1 0 after one. Second. Hey, the battle for the Crosstown Cup will be decided here at Wrigley Field when the White Sox come north to play the Cubs Wednesday, May 29th, and Thursday, the 30th. Tickets for both afternoon games, including in the Budweiser bleachers, are still available. 
Go to Cubs.com today to purchase. Troy Tulowitzki, ball one. Three hits, including two doubles last night. Mentioned earlier in the series, uh, Tyler Colvin and DJ LeMahieu are both at Triple A, Colorado Springs at the moment. LeMahieu is playing shortstop. Rockies have him there as a backup plan. Tulowitzki coming off his injury. Banged off. Catcher Navarro. Uh, LeMahieu hitting over 360, playing well defensively. Samarja so wants the fastball in, and it's low. That's a really an enviable position, is it, to be playing shortstop at Triple A for this organization behind Tulowitzki? So, you know, the only way you get to the big leagues is if he gets hurt. Nobody wants to see you. You show up, everybody's mad that you're there. And LeMayu's an interesting guy. I, I think he's a really good third baseman, very good at second, and it sounds like he's taken the shortstop pretty well. And as Tulowitzki grounds out, I have a feeling he's going to be back in the big league soon, and when he is, he'll, he'll be a super utility guy for a long time. Todd Helton. Need those guys. These utility type guys can play all over and play those positions well. You know, there's a lot of guys that can go out and stand out there and be somewhat adequate, but guys that can be average or even a little plus in terms of their defensive work, numerous positions, it's a valuable piece. Todd Helton, the eighth overall pick in the 95 draft out of the University of Tennessee. Played football and baseball at Tennessee. He was a quarterback. Started three games in 1994. The three time All American as a baseball player. Played first and was the closer as well. And then he takes a walk. Mm. <laughs> you can't believe it. So Todd Helton now has walked 1,302 times in his career. The third baseman Arenado. He's been impressive in this series, particularly on the defensive side. He made a great play late last night. That one lined out into the gap. Soriano trying to cut it off. He does. And he's going to keep Arenado to a single. Ball gets by Barney, but Rizzo backing it up. That's a nice play by Soriano. Instead of second and third, it's first and third. This bat is going to play up here for a good long while. This kid can really swing it. And I think the power will come as well. Ball gets by Barney, but by then, Arenado had slammed on the brakes because of the hustle and the ability to turn around and get that ball headed back into the right direction quickly by Soriano. So, double play still in order. Strike on Rutledge. He homered on Monday. So Marja wants a double play ball here, the 0 1. Good try. Missed by much. 
It's, it's a game of wills now. He's trying to throw that ball down around the knees with some movement to get a ground ball. Rutledge, he's thinking, no, no, no. Get that ball up, get it elevated. It's something that he can get airborne. And a ground ball in the right. And the Rockies have tied it. Helton will trot home. Rutledge with his 12th RBI, and it's one to one. Marja got his ground ball, just wasn't in the right place as far as he was concerned. Not a bad pitch at all. A little slider out on the outside edge. Here's your beat, Tori Alba, back with the Rockies for the second time in his career, 06 to 09. His first go round. His debut back in 01 with the Giants. Mm -hmm. Try. Where's that? That's what Jeff's asking. Where is that? That's all not down, Jeff. Jeff Kellogg, the home plate umpire. That's where they teach you to throw it in pitching class. You get good grades in pitching well, class. You know when I showed up. And a couple that Samaj has looked in on the 3-0 to Helton and that one there. Chopped to Valbuena. They will turn to 5 4 3. Well, Samarja probably thinking one batter too late, but he limits the damage. So the Rockies tie it. It's 1 1 here in the second. Play a game in beautiful Wrigley Field. The Mets come to town this weekend for a three game set. Tickets are still available, especially for the Friday and Sunday games. They're both at 120. Purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com. A 1 1 tie. The Ivy not yet at full bloom, but pretty close. Nice night to be out in the bleachers. It's a nice night to be out. Well, Garland will face Valbuena, Navarro, and Barney here in the Cubs second. Luis missing the last three games with the sprained right pinky finger, although really missed one start because in the interim, the Cubs faced two left handed starters. Shows bunt and takes a curve for a strike.
Found back. So John Garland mm -hmm. was a Cubs first round pick 1997. The following year he was sent to the White Sox. For Matt Karchner. That one didn't work out so good for the Cubs. No, and, and you think about and in hindsight's 2020, but you know, Garland being the tenth overall pick in that 97 draft has put together a career we've talked about. That will get down in front of Fowler and Valbuena as a leadoff hit. And Karchner would spend uh, three seasons with the Cubs. As a reliever, I mean, 58 appearances, so didn't pitch a whole lot at a 460 earned run average. But these are types of guys you'd, you'd like to develop and keep if you can, for sure. And it's not a great track record when you go back and look at a lot of those Cubs high draft picks. Well, and it's also the uh, the trend in the game now, right? Is to, to secure your your younger prospects, lock them up. Clubs are less willing to deal prospects for veterans. It seems to me because of the cost and, and the fact that other clubs are locking guys up, so there's fewer players on the market. It's really important to identify who you, you know who you, who you think is going to come up and be a solid contributor for a number of years. And hang on to those guys. We should note the Cubs made that deal in July of 98, and they would end up in the playoffs that year. So they traded some future for some present. We try to put everything in the context. And Karchner with 29 appearances as a Cub that year, but a, a 5.14 ERA. And you know what? If the Cubs had won the World Series that year, even if Karchner had not done really much to help them, people probably would look back on that deal and say, well, it worked out fine. Yeah, I mean, I have no qualms with trading a prospect for a, for a veteran when you're contending it, if you, you know, if the guy has a chance to be a difference maker for you. You, know, you win some, you lose some. I don't know how, how, how they value Karcher because Karcher wasn't pitching particularly well with the White Sox either right. at the time. So that's the thing. I mean, if you, if, you know, it seems to me like Karcher was a guy that people were probably at the time, and I don't know this for sure, they might have been arguing, well, this guy would benefit from a change of scenery. Well, and the big one I think about is Smoltz for Doyle Alexander. Right. And the Tigers got bounced in the playoffs by the Twins, but Alexander went 9-0 and with the Tigers after that deal from Atlanta. And then won 14 games a year after that. So it's an easy second guess to say, well, John Smoltz had a Hall of Fame career. Why would you make that deal? Well, Alexander did help the Tigers a lot that year. And the uh, Randy Johnson deal that the Astros pulled off sure. in 98. Freddie Garcia, Carlos Guillen, two really good players, but very good long major league careers. Gary Hunsucker would tell you it was worth it. CC Sabathia with Milwaukee. Yeah, big unit went 10 and 1 with the Astros. And 11 starts. 2 2 pitch, and that is hit foul by Deonor. Larry Anderson for Jeff Bagwell. 1990. And Larry pitched well for the Red Sox. Two balls, two strikes. Ball ended up on the field, out in left. Time called. Yeah, you have those deals that are known for known, veteran for veteran. You have the known for the unknown, the veteran for the minor leaguer. And then you have the unknown for the unknown. And those are probably the most intriguing. 
And I think uh, the Cubs made one of those types of deals when they sent Andrew Kashner to the Padres for Anthony Rizzo. Just a good old fashioned baseball trade. Mm -hmm. We're going to trade one of our prospects for one of yours. And if I had to make a wild prediction, I think that trade's going to work out for both teams. Well, they both have such high ceiling guys. Health is really the only question. And I think clubs feel safer with position players when it comes to the health question mark. Now, Buena running. What happened there? Luis stopped. He thought it was ball four. He thought it was ball four, but it was strike three. That's a double play. Two outs. Uh, Navarro, like he was going to discard his bat, but as a runner, you can't assume. No, you sure can't. That was a bizarre play. It was a changeup. While Buena's looking at, I don't know if he's reacting to the pitch, if he's reacting to Navarro's actions at home plate. I'm guessing the latter. So, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if he gets thrown out if he. Continues to run hard the whole way or not. The problem is we'll never know. It's two costly mistakes on the bases of the Cubs tonight. Two and one on Barney. So Marge is on deck. And he pulls that into the left field corner. So after a three hit night last night. Barney continues here this evening. I have a theory that after caught stealing the, the next guy gets a hit a high percentage of the time. I never really tested it. It just seems like that to me. Because then it allows everybody to play the what if game. <laughs> it just seems like. Pitcher kind of relaxes a little bit. More aggressive after getting the caught stealing. Who knows? Maybe I'm dead wrong. So Marja, deep left center. Gone! That's a pick me up. A two run homer. Gotta love the production from the bottom of the order. Two out double by Barney after the base running mistake, and Samarja hits a no doubter. He doubled in his last start, his first hit of the year. Now he goes deep. Only homer twice in spring training. And this is the second regular season home run. Did it against Milwaukee in 09. Our Ford home run replay. Cubs lead 3 to 1. Deep off Chris Narvison in Milwaukee, September 23rd of 09. And gets Garland tonight. Trying to get it back here. And, uh, strike him out, throw him out, double play. Then Barney doubled the eight hitter, followed by a home run from the pitcher.
can't take the smile off his face. The Jesus went and he strikes out. He didn't think so. But Chad Fairchild said he did. Samarja with a two run homer, and the Cubs have their second lead already of the night. We've only played two innings. Patrick Mooney brought to you by nationwide insurance agent Jeff Vukovic. Visit at jeffvuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. So, Patrick, a lot going on as always with this Cubs team. Anthony Rizzo signing his long term deal uh, earlier this week. Jeff Samarja just hit a home run. Matt Garza should be back soon. So, where do we start? Let's start with Anthony Rizzo's long term deal. You talked to Troy Tulowitzki about it, Anthony Rizzo. Yeah, he's one of the few guys that really kind of knows what Anthony's going through. It's almost an unprecedented type commitment the Cubs have made after only, you know, 100 something games here. Uh, and I thought the interesting thing that he said was, you know, I'm sure everyone thinks that, oh, I can relax now. But in reality, you know, if you get a, a deal like that, you're wired a certain way. And then if you're 0 for 20, you're not thinking, oh, good thing I'm rich. You're thinking, you know, I need a hit. I need to carry this franchise. And that's really what the Cubs are. Expecting out of Anthony now. And you can see Tulowitzki, he he plays with a lot of intensity. He's not like leaking it out. And as Garland went around, it's one and two on the Rockies pitcher. But you know, reading all the analysis of it, it seems as though most people are looking at it like it'll be a bargain for the Cubs when it's all said and done. Yeah, I mean Tulowitzki was saying, you know, I don't really know Rizzo that well to be honest, but he knew that a team doesn't make a commitment like that unless they know the person inside and out. Uh, grounds out. And are completely comfortable with something like that. And he doesn't blame Rizzo for doing it either because you can't project year to year that oh I'm going to hit 30 home runs every year for the next couple of years. You got to you got to sign something like that when you can take care of your family. I could do it when you're 23 years of age. I mean that's. The nature of the game and the economics of the game is changing to a certain degree too, right? So you got a young guy; he's got a chance to sign a multi-year deal like that, and by the time it's done, he still should be, you know, have a number of prime years left in his career. Without a doubt. It's Eric Young Jr. flying to the warning track to start the game. The other story is Matt Garza; he'll have another rehab outing tomorrow. Sounds like maybe one more after tomorrow, although Matt left open the possibility if he can stretch it out to six that he might try to talk him into <laughs> letting him start with the big league club the next time around. But uh, what happens at that point? And I think a lot of the speculation now is going to be around Carlos Villanueva after last night. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, uh, 
the way Villanueva has put it multiple times is I'm an employee here. Uh, and he's, he's pitched pretty well throughout this uh, first six weeks of the season. Uh, but I think if you look at the number of innings he's thrown throughout his career, I don't know if it was realistic to think he could throw 200 innings this year and he has that experience in the bullpen. I think he could help this team out a lot. In sure. Role. Oh, absolutely. He's been very good in that role in the past. And a, an area that has already been a strength is that rotation. And then you add Garza to the mix. Um, I don't know about you guys. I, I'm really curious. I, my assumption is that he'll come back and he may not be Matt Garza, you know, the first two or three starts, but the track record says he's going to be pretty good. Probably be thrown 94, 95. And then you get into the question of what happens. He's due to be a free agent at the end of the season. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't rule out him, him coming back. You know, obviously it's irrelevant to discuss it until he shows that he's healthy, but clearly you guys know the kind of energy he brings and the stuff he has. The kind of power on that you build a rotation. Around. Swing and a miss for Samarja's first strikeout. You have any sort of gut feeling on Jeff Samarja and whether or not he will sign a long-term deal before the end of this season? You think he'll wait and talk to the Cubs after the season? Yeah, I don't think there's zero chance. I don't know. It just seemed like last off-season he was very specifically said, you know, I want to put together a larger body of work. Show that I'm that number one starter, pitch 200 innings, and then go from there. I think at the end of the day, he will be a Cub for a very long time. Um, he's just in a different situation than, than Anthony is in terms of the money he made out of Notre Dame. And obviously, we all know how, how confident he is and what he thinks uh, he should be worth. Yeah, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I, I think if you were to go to a lot of young starting pitchers who are one in five. <laughs> And dangle a big contract under their nose. They go, you know, where do I sign and how quickly can I sign it? Whereas Jeff is, you know, at least what he's saying publicly is, no, I'm in no big hurry here. We'll be okay. I think he knows he's going to make his money, and there's no sense of urgency in that regard at the moment. But as you said, Patrick, my my hunch is he wants to be here long term. He's not in any hurry to leave. And he, he said that on multiple occasions. That, you know, I want to be here. The front office wants me to be here. Uh, it just might take a little longer. Uh, and he's still under club control through 2015. Swing and a miss. Two and two the count as Samarja looks for his first win since opening day. Well, and I think that point right there speaks to what I was talking about earlier about the economics of the, uh, how they've changed. The fact that he's under cl club control to 2015 and we're having this conversation here in, in May of 2013. Three and two. And normally in, in the past, that conversation wouldn't take place to a player's walk here till you know his, his final year of uh, arbitration before he became a free agent. Gonzalez on deck. Cubs lead three one. In the Samarja homer. Swing and a miss to end the inning. CSNChicago.com. That's where you go to read. Patrick Mooney, our Cubs insider. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, guys.
Twitter using hashtag Cubs talk. And we'll read one back later on tonight our AT&T tweet of the game. John Garland gave up a homer to De Jesus in the first. That was a leadoff shot and then a two run homer with two outs in the second to Jeff Samarja. Castro lines diving stab Josh Rutledge. Can't hit it any harder than that. Buzzards luck for Castro here. It's getting a lot of good swings at John Garland tonight. So John Garland is in his 13th year in the big leagues. That home run by Samarja was the first one Garland has ever allowed to a pitcher. Fouled away. Now I should note Garland has spent almost or actually more than twice the amount of uh, his career in the American League than the National League. It's the first time a pitcher has gotten him. Yeah, and from this day forward, every time that Jeff Samarja hears the name John Garland, he'll be able to say, yeah, got him. Uh, he's in my book. He'll be he'll, years from now, he'll be talking to his friends. And, hey, who was that guy, the right hander pitch for the White Sox in the 05 series, 18 game win? Oh, John Garland. Yeah, 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 yeah. I took him deep. Ouch. Might have been the back foot. Cut fastball just boring down and in and off the back knee it looked like. I mean, how on earth he hit that ball to begin with I don't know. Now that Garland is a Rocky the only National League West team. He hasn't pitched for is the Giants. Diamondbacks, Dodgers, Padres, Rockies. He's also pitched for the Angels. He went to spring training with the Mariners, so he's got the, the West Coast canvassed. High fly, not deep. Gonzalez with the grab. Carlos, a California guy, twice was the California State High School Player of the Year. His first major league win at just 20 with the White Sox. His teammates doused him with beer. And the reporters came up to him. He said, I didn't drink any. <laughs> How about that? Huh? He had of legal age pitching in the big leagues. He was the youngest player in, in the big leagues at the time. Sinker misses inside. 2 0. On Soriano. Young coming in. You know, keep on jogging right into his own dugout. One, two, three, go. The Cubs for the first time. After three on a great night for baseball, the Cubs lead the Rockies in the rubber match three to one.
Fourth inning is brought to you by the new Cool Ranch Doritos Locos Tacos from Taco Bell. Liv Moss. That's great shots here tonight at Wrigley Field. And the Menards grounds crew manicuring the infield dirt as always after the third inning. Well, a pretty tough trio here in this Rockies lineup. Gonzalez, Tulowitzki, and Helton. And a called strike on Gonzalez. Put the spotlight on Gonzalez in our open showed that uh, the numbers that he had put up against the Cubs in his career. Just crazy stuff. And 75 at bats. It's not just a handful of ABs. And a lot of damage. Slugging average way up over 800. Public enemy number one here in Chicago if he keeps that up. So Marge is 1 1. Hit hard on the ground, backhanded by Barney, and he gets it. Nice job just to stay on his feet as Darwin stumbled a little bit as he got to the ball. Yeah. Well, he knows there's a speedy guy going down the line, so he doesn't have a lot of time to gain his balance. So as he's stumbling, he manages to. Get turned around and then get airborne to flip that ball to first base. Pretty, pretty play. Tulowitzki with one out. Well, you were watching it, I was listening. On my drive into the ballpark today, the uh, Astros took a late 7 5 lead in Detroit. Jose Barris trying to save it, but he walked to hit Torrey Hunter and had to face Miguel Cabrera <laughs> with the bases loaded. Cabrera hit one to, was it deep right center? Deep right center. And Brandon and Barnes with a leaping catch at the wall to end the game. So the Astros win it and avoid the sweep. Two walks and a hit batsman ahead of Miguel Cabrera. Talk about a tough way to make a living. Lined to left and Soriano will make the catch. Cabrera went into that at bat, JD, hitting 500 with runners in scoring position. Wow. And I think I think last year he was 380 something in those situations. So you said last time when Helton walked, it was his uh, 1300 walk or 1300 second, I think. I did some math. Yeah. That's 22 miles worth of walks, roughly. It's also about two seasons worth of uh, plate appearances. Not bad. See the 20th anniversary patch on the right uniform sleeve. Rocky started up play in 1993. Swing and a miss. So the Rockies go down in order for the second straight inning. In fact, three out of the four innings. One, two, three. It's three one Cubs.
three to one. Sent Sherholtz, Valbuena, and Navarro against John Garland. The dirt ball one. Adam Dunn, two homers, five knocked in as the White Sox beat the Twins nine to four in Minneapolis. White Sox pulling up the rear in the American League in offense. They got nine, a season best today. 35th career multi homer game for Dunn. Still hitting 156, though, even after a three for four. Yeah, he's one of those guys, all or nothing. He's got more home runs than singles. 20 hits, nine homers, three doubles, 48 strikeouts. Chris Carter of the Astros has struck out 60 times. We're in mid May. Sherholtz with a fly ball to center. Fowler went back, now comes in. Up just a little bit. What's that doing, Len? Is it blowing it out? It's kind of swirling. I think it's, you know, it's technically blowing in, but we've seen some balls hit pretty well. You know, when I threw my baseball card down, I flipped my uh, Starlin Castro baseball card down, it blew right back underneath us. That's usually how I gauge the wind. Yeah. The 0 1 off the outside corner. Rangers beat the A's in Oakland 6 to 2. We'll take two of three in that series. Nelson Cruz with a three run homer. I don't know if you can be as good as the Rangers have been in recent years and be considered a surprise team. But the fact that they're playing as well as they are, I think, is a, a bit of a surprise to many people. Uh, 12 games above 500 now. How about the matchup tomorrow? You know, I on my off days, especially after a long stretch here, I generally don't watch a lot of baseball, but I may have to check in on you, Darvish, against Justin Berlin. Yeah, that's a pretty good that's matchup. Pretty good. You probably end up nine to eight. Amazing how many times that happens when you get all jacked up for a, a marquee matchup like that. Full count on Valbuena. The pitch. A bouncer to second. And Rutledge will get him easily. Are you following your favorite team on social media? The Cubs offer sweepstakes, giveaways, contests, player interaction, and insider content on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Tumblr, and Google Plus. Follow the Cubs today. Make sure you're seeing the latest updates on each platform. Got it all covered. Navarro missed a curve. Cleveland pounded the Phillies 10 to 4. They hit three home runs. Cleveland hanging in there in the AL Central. Game and a half behind Detroit in second place. Cole Hamels is 1 in 6, and the Phillies have lost 8. Of his nine starts. Help could be on the way. They signed Carlos Zambrano to a minor league deal. Fly to right, and this will end the inning as 
Young hauls it in. So we head off to the fifth. It is still three to one Cubs. You know, the Mexican girl wants to spread their three cheese queso love to the Chicago land area. Opt into Qdoba's mobile club by texting Q to 50500 to receive free chips and queso. He's having a party. Well, you just mentioned it. Carlos Zambrano, a minor league deal with the Phillies. When he starts 15 relief appearances with the Miami Marlins last year, 132 and 91 in his career. I hope he makes it back. Nolan Arenado is one for one. He looks at a fastball for a strike. Padres swept the Orioles 8 4. The final today. In Baltimore, the Padres with 17 hits, matching their season high. Everett Cabrera had four of them, plus a walk. So they started the year 5 and 15. But they've now gone 13 and 6 over their last 19. Break up the pods. Were they home or are they in Baltimore? They were in Baltimore. We're talking about sometimes how these marquee pitching matchups don't uh, live up to expectations. Tonight in Tampa, it was uh, John Lester against David Price. It's an 8 to 2 Red Sox lead. and. More importantly, David Price had to leave that game with a triceps injury. It's the two and a third. On the ground, and it's just wide of the bag. And now for the Firestone Complete Auto Care Extra Mile Index. Missing bats. Generally has not been a problem for Jeff. We're going to see Matt Harvey this weekend as the Mets come in. I'm anxious to see him pitch. I'm not so sure how anxious the Cub hitters are to face him. He got him. There's another strikeout right on cue. Four for Samarja. Splitter that's such a good weapon for him against lefties. He's able to finish off Arenado with here, getting it down and away. Tough pitch to execute. Well done. Oh, off speed to the glove side. That's not an easy pitch to make. Rutledge 
Rutledge rather with a, an RBI single in the second. Time it tied the game. Sinker misses downstairs. That's where you want to miss with that pitch. You said you you could not sink the ball. Did you try to throw a two seamer, or did you give up on it early? I, did, I was a four seam guy, a kind of a short arm delivery. On a hop, it's played perfectly by Rizzo. Some RJ cover, two outs. And maybe the kids growing up now with all the instruction they get at a younger age, somebody could get a hold of a 12 year old kid and say, You need to change your arm angle and delivery so you can sink the ball or whatever. But most kids of my generation, you just played and then you were what you were. You know, you kind of threw the ball around in the backyard, you started playing Little League and all that good stuff. And by the time you got to high school, uh, your delivery was kind of there. It's, it's who you were as a pitcher. And if you happen to have a good enough, good enough stuff, somebody scouted you and said, Get a chance to play. Bounce right back to some marks and he lops one over to Rizzo to end the inning. So since the Rutledge RBI single in the second, they haven't had a base runner, and the Cubs lead by two. As the Cubs battle the Mets at Wrigley this Friday. That's May 17th. It's a 120 game in the first 10,000 adults 21 years of age and older. Will receive a pitcher and mug set compliments of Budweiser. Tickets are still available for this game especially. Out there in the Budweiser bleachers to purchase tickets visit Cubs.com. Underway here in the Cubs fifth. Fouled back. Hey, remember that note we had uh, from earlier about Carlos Gonzalez was, I believe, the seventh visiting player here at Wrigley since the Cubs moved in mm -hmm. 1916 to go at least five for five with two home runs. Yeah, I do. Okay, well, I've got to add this. Gus Bell did it in 1956. David Bell's grandfather. May 29th, 56 with the Reds. Gus Bell went five for five with three homers and seven RBIs. I wonder if David knows. 
will tell him. Mentioned Pujols, Bo Diaz, Willie Stargell. High pockets Kelly. Back in 1923, went five for five with three. Johnny Hop with the Pirates in 1950, six for six with two home runs. Three twos punched out in the left center, but Gonzalez will get to the spot for the out. Time for some Xfinity high speed action. Jeff Samarja with his first homer since 09, but his third of the year, including spring training. Probably most telling in that replay was the reaction of the pitcher, John Garland. He did not turn around. <laughs> Samarja hit it that it was going to go a long ways. Harlem has not allowed a base runner since the Samarja home run. So the default word is he's or term he's settled in. Settled in since that home run. He's found his groove. Not quite in the rocking chair yet, <laughs> but he's getting there. Rifle foul. Well, that's a good play. That thing. Was hit extremely hard outside. Yeah, the key is if you're going to jump up in front of one of those, don't change your mind at the last minute. That's where somebody gets smoked. He stands up there to make a play and then thinks, uh, I don't want a piece of this. And then they move and the guy behind him gets it in the coconut. This time Garland wins the battle. That nice assortment of pitches obviously knows how to pitch. 35 wins, double digit wins seven or eight times. Great tweet from Chris Kampka. A good friend who uh, knows just about every stat there is in the world. Tonight, the first time the Cubs have had a leadoff home run, that was DeJesus, and a home run by a pitcher. In the same game since June 12th of 1971, Don Kessinger and Kenny Holtzman. That's some quick research there. 42 years. Here was the leadoff blast. Seamer out away from him up and deposited. Two oh pitch. <laughs> he got fooled. <laughs> you don't see David get fooled often. A change up. He was thinking something else. He's cheating. He's cheating on a heater here, two and oh and Allen really sells it well. Great arm action. Looked like the fastball coming out of his hand. But you know that's the time to cheat. It's two outs, nobody on. You're looking for a little extra base hit. Works out in the end. Picks up his second knock tonight. Yeah, well, and that speaks to you know we talk so much about hitters going to the home plate with a game plan, understanding the game situation. What their approach should be. 2 0 hitters count. As I mentioned, nobody on base with two outs. You're thinking extra base hit. So nothing wrong with taking a big swing on that 2 0 pitch. Just get fooled as he did. You still have two pitches to play with. 
And you kind of go back to staying in yourself in, 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 within yourself a little bit, not taking that big swing on two one. Get a knock. Hope Castro could drive you in with an extra base hit of his own. Marlin will check on him. Mentioned John's strange spring training. He pitched really well with the Mariners before getting cut. He did not pitch last year, recovering from right shoulder surgery in June of 2011. Made just nine starts that year with the Dodgers. The year before that, he was a Padres opening day starter, had a career best ERA of 347. So he's on the comeback trail this year. Also might explain the, the low pitch counts. <laughs> oh one pitch. Bounced foul. Castro came in with seven hits over his last five games robbed of a hit by Rutledge as he lined out in the third. Rounded out in the first. Two outs two strikes. Sometimes this is where you see a base runner get a little daring. Try to steal a bag with the thinking, well, if I get thrown out, then Castro gets to start the next inning with a fresh count. Marlon set at the belt. And he's just not running, and the pitch is high. It wasn't a pitch out, but it was almost like a pitch out. Tori Alba calling for that high, high fastball. Coming way up out of his crouch. No way Castro is going to put that in play and had the Hazers been running, they would have had a real good shot at him. Broke his bat. He was able to loft one over the shortstop and in the left. Well, I'm sure Starlin would tell you he had that one coming after his last at bat. He hit that rocket to second base for an out. This time, gets one off his thumbs, gets jammed. A little soft flare, but it's a knock. Three doubles for Paul Goldschmidt today as the Diamondbacks beat Tim Hudson for the first time in his career. He was 7 and 0 going in. Diamondbacks 5, Braves 3. So Arizona wins the final two games of that three game series. Ian Kennedy, now 2 and 3, he got the win. One strike on Rizzo. Two on, two down in the fifth. In on the hands, foul pop. Tori Alba, however, will not have a play. Tori Alba popping around behind home plate there with DeJesus on second. 
They want to make sure that David's not tipping location to, to Rizzo, so he's dancing around behind home plate after giving two series of signs. And we saw Garland call Tulowitzki and just probably make sure he was on the, the, the same page, knowing what they were using for an indicator and what pitch they were going to throw. AT&T U-verse multi-view. Cubs trying to add on to their two-run lead. The 0-2. It's low and Story Alba pounces on it. Very active back there. Setting up out of the right handed batter's box before sliding inside. Cubs have had to hit the Rockies seven to two. Two of those seven hits have been home runs, supplying the tally so far. Cutter is lined foul. You know, it's, it's interesting watching Tori Alba back there moving around, and, and, and I get it if they're worried about sign stealing or anything like that, tipping off location. But as a pitcher, I think that would be maddening. I mean, you come and set here, pick up the sign, pick up the target. Now he's he's moving as you're getting ready to deliver the pitch. That would drive me nuts. He taps the ground toward the outside, We're going in again. You almost get to the point as a batter if you see him tap the outside, you just assume he's going in. <laughs> right, if you're on second base That's and the pattern, wherever he starts, he's not going to end up. Him right on the phone to the bullpen. Got a left hander up already. Not good when the number to the bullpen is 9 1 1. All this happening with two down, two singles, and now a walk. That wasn't long ago. I looked up there in that graphic, and he was at 72 pitches, now at 90, and adhering to a fairly strict policy of no more than 100 pitches. So tonight is. Uh, Pretty much done. Not a hitter or two. Comes Jim Wright. Saw it. Josh Outman in the bullpen. That's a good name for a pitcher. Ah, we were talking about that the other night. Different name. Outman? Are you kidding me? Bring me an Outman. It's like a superhero. Right hander Jeff <laughs> double play ball also getting loose. <laughs> Disguised as an old time baseball player with old fashioned socks, it's superhero Josh Outman. Look at this guy. I love a lefty. Cheer on the Cubs as they host the Mets. Coming up this Sunday, May 19th at 120. The first 5,000 children, 13 and younger at the game, will receive a mini Cubs player figurine. Compliments of Pepsi. Then after the game, the first 1,000 children, 13 and younger, will have the opportunity to run the bases. Tickets are still available. Visit Cubs.com to purchase. John Garland due to lead off the top half of the six. Always would love to see him. Get Soriano here so he could pinch hit in the top of the inning and not have to double switch. Three on, two down. Here's the pitch. It is a strike on the outside. Bounced foul. 0 and 2. Seems to be the MO with Soriano. They've been trying to work him in. 
with that two seamer quite a bit. Well, Garland pretty much just empty the tank here with a pitch count. The fact that he is due up in the sixth. This will be it for him one way or another. And he's got Soriano down 0 and 2. Line right to the mm. third baseman. And Arenado went down to his knees and made the grab. A loud third out as the Cubs leave him loaded. It's three to one. Stats and tweets with Cubs in game live only at CSNChicago.com brought to you by Comcast Business Class. Travis Wood fan club in the house. Oh, yeah. Reed Brignac pinch hitting and he sends one. Out of here to make it three to two. So Brignac on the first pitch, and he came in for Garland. It's the Rockies within a run. The home run swing there. First pinch hit homer of Brignac's career. That's an ambush. Comes off the bench. Samarja tries to get the jump on him. Inner half fastball, but up. Not in enough. Uppercut swing and boy, what a turn of events. Soriano hits that bullet to third base with the bases loaded. Off the bat, you're thinking there's a bases clearing double. Possibly. We're right at Arenado, inning over, and now boom, one run game. One strike on Young. 11th career homer for Brignac. First as a Rocky, the other nine were with the Rays. High one and one to count. So Marge is one two. There's a splitter in the dirt. Well, 
Martin has been very efficient tonight to 65 pitches. As in one since opening day, seven consecutive winless starts since. And it took matters into his own hands tonight with a go ahead two run homer. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Well, we've got a big event coming up here in Chicago on June 21st. It's after the uh, Cubs host the Astros, the second annual hot stove cool music event across the street at Metro. Tickets go on sale this Saturday at noon. Go to MetroChicago.com. You see uh, Chicago Cubs charities. Theo's foundation to be named later will benefit. It's all for children's charities. And uh, before the game tonight, it was great to have with us uh, here at the ballpark the Chicago Children's Choir, uh, Chicago Wapiti Rugby Football Club. This is uh, rugby for kids. Pretty interesting. City Year Chicago Family Reach Foundation, Garfield Park Little League, Girls in the Game and Late Night Peace Basketball League. They were all here at the ballpark today. They watched batting practice. One youngster got a bat from Edwin Jackson. David DeJesus signed autographs. And these are the first grantees from last year's proceeds of the first Hot Stove Cool Music Chicago. Boy dog pondering will be headlining. Theo's going to play Peter Gammons. I'll ben, get up there and make Casper. a fool of myself. No, 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 no. Be fun. He'll be bringing it. I get you on the cowbell. <laughs> because you always need more cowbell. You always need cowbell. You should get Adam Dunn to come and play the cowbell. Because he looks like Will Farrell. That'd be. Be good. Fowler strikes out. Six for Samarja. Two in a row after the yeah. Brignac homer. That home run got his attention. A couple of punch outs. Young and Fowler both going down swinging for the second time tonight. This time an elevated fastball gets Fowler. Young has a split finger pitch. So two outs, nobody on. Who'd, who'd you say was headlining? That Boy event? Dog Pondering. Chicago based band in the last two decades or so. It's going to be great. Side three and oh on Gonzalez Tulowitzki lurking on deck. 2010 was Gonzalez's breakout year, led the league in hitting 30 plus home runs. Deep breath by Samarja. Here he comes on a 3 0, and it's a cutter for a strike. Looked like a pretty hittable pitch, but Gonzalez looked like he was taking it all the way. Some guys don't like to hit 3 0. He overthrew that sinker mm -hmm. and he walked him. Only his second free pass. The other one was Helton, and he would eventually come around to score back in the second. And a lot of times, the two outs, nobody on with your, with your middle of the order guys up there. You want them looking to swing the bat three and oh, you're looking for, you know, big jolt with two outs. But Gonzalez, because he can run, it makes sense for him to to lay off that 3 0, perhaps try to work a walk. He's the only guy in the big leagues to hit 20 bombs, steal 20 bases in each of the last three seasons. He's got the whole package. Not to mention he's got a pretty good hitter behind him too.
Fly ball to center. DeJesus going back on it. To the warning track, and he's got it. Right in front of the vines. Ooh, says Samarja. He gives up the leadoff homer, but the Cubs do still lead by just one. Paul here on Comcast Sportsnet. The Northsiders will welcome back former Cup Marlon Bird and the Mets to Wrigley Field. Cap and Holly will kick off coverage with Papa John's pregame live at 11:30. JD and I will hit the air at noon. Cubs and Mets Saturday on Comcast Sportsnet. Jeremy Hefner and Scott Feldman the matchup. There's Josh Outman. Well, the outman is 1 and 0 with a 395 this year. He's fastball slider change up. And awfully tough on left handed hitters in his career. St. Louis native. Acquired from the Oakland A's prior to last season. At the Central Missouri State University and majored in dietetics. The mules. That's the nickname. Mm -hmm. Been drafted by the Phils back in 2005. Control has been a bit of an issue for him. Fairly high walk rate. Coming into this season, left-handed hitters only a 184 average against them. Sure holds lines to Helton. Thought about jumping, but never did have to. Good swing. Sure holds off a tough lefty, hit it hard, but unfortunately, right at help. So that's two in a row line outs. Soriano with the bases loaded and the fifth. Sure holds here to start the sixth. Hardly seems fair. Buena with his first action since Saturday, and he gets a foul pop behind the home dugout. Well, the Bulls dropped a close one tonight, 94-91 in Miami. The season is now over, losing in five games, in the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. But congrats on a great year. They were undermanned. Without their best player. They should be very proud of the season they had. Oh, 
Oh and two on Valbuena. Here's a pitch. And he went. And that's a strikeout. MOB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and Blackberry 10. At bat delivers Cubs baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Cubs.com for details. Navarro batting right handed. The Cubs switch hitter. Called strike. The tables are turning a little bit in that Milwaukee Pittsburgh all time series. Pirates still struggle in Milwaukee, but they've now won two of the first three in a four game set in Pittsburgh. 3 1 the final tonight. Wandy Rodriguez over Giovanni Gallardo. Jason Grilly already with 16 saves. And the Pirates improved to 23 and 17. Jason Grilly, a journeyman type reliever, getting his first chance to really claim a job as a closer in the big leagues, and he's doing a heck of a job. His whip is down to 0 0.74, his ERA at 102. Shin Su Chu with two homers tonight for the Reds in Miami. It's 4 0 Cincy as they go to the bottom of the ninth. The Marlins have 10 hits and are being shut out. That's not easy to do. What inning is it? Bottom of the ninth. Chu is 4 for 5. And now hitting 322 on the year. He's been on four times. Votto's been on three times. Unbelievable. Crazy. Mike Leak went six and two thirds, gave up nine hits and no runs. Two double play balls have helped. Swing and a miss to end the Cubs sixth. Let's go to the seventh. Three to Chicago. Samarja gets ready for the seventh. <laughs> you think Bob Renly predicted Samarja's home run? So, to fill you in, partner, yeah. every time Samarja came to the plate, <laughs> Bob would say, I feel like this is the one. <laughs> He's going to go deep. He 
became kind of a running joke. I got a call. But uh, it took him four years after his first one, but he connected on by far the biggest swing of the night. Bob is probably reading the paper this morning. The Arizona Republic saw the matchups and Samarja. He's going to go deep tonight. Got a good feeling about this. Low on Helton. Well, it is law enforcement appreciation night, and members of the 19th District Chicago Police Department will conduct the stretch. Commander Elias Bulgaris, Sergeant Jason Clark, Sergeant Angelo Hitiris. If I get the names right. And the on field pregame recognition today, Illinois State Trooper Brian Scott. Got a great ovation for his heroic act during a snowstorm in March. He helped lift a 3,000 pound vehicle off a trapped man on I 57, essentially uh, saving the man's life. Nice going. Mm -hmm. State Trooper Brian Scott. That was a cutter. And it almost hit Helton. With a big leg kick leaning in to cover the outside part of the plate. That cut fastball buzzes his tower a little bit. But you know what I like about Todd Helton? Look at the reaction. There's a lot of hitters with, with a menacing glare anytime you come in on him. He just plays the game. Two and two. Those pretty quick reflexes, Todd Helton. The pitch fouled back. He's had a lot of back problems here the last few years. I don't know who it was yesterday. I would assume it was their strength and conditioning coordinator but Helton as he was going out to stretch before BP was wrestling near the on deck circle with a member of the uh, Rocky that staff was that was great I mean it's so the, Todd Helton doing a little cross training <laughs> most guys go out for pregame stretch he goes out for pregame wrestling three and two. Man's game, but you got to have a lot of little boy in you. Yeah. Helton high in the air to right. Long run by Sherholtz coming over, and he's got it. Boy, Helton hit it really high, and that gave Nate time to get over there. Deep into that corner he goes before securing out number one. Bounce foul by Arenado. Broken bat bouncer to Castro. He will throw in time. Marja coming off probably his roughest outing of the year in Washington last time out. He got hit around pretty good. Nice bounce back performance here tonight. He's been really sharp. So two outs, it's Rutledge. Six punch outs, a lot of weak contact. Oh. 
in the dirt one and one. That one cranked a deep left. Gonna bang off the wall. Soriano fires it back in. Relay throw! Out! Inning over! Stretch time! Guest conductors for Take Me Out to the Ball Game, members of the 19th District Chicago Police Department. All right, Cup fans, let me hear you. A one. A two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I ever get back. Well, it's root, root, root for the copies. If they don't win, it's a shame. Or it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Let's get some runs! children ages 5 to 13 of all abilities the ultimate major league experience for seven one week sessions in various Chicago area locations join fellow teammates for a week of top notch baseball instruction exclusive access and unforgettable moments visit Cubs.com slash camps to sign up your future Cub today Darwin Barney with that quick tag to Keep Josh Rutledge out of scoring position and in the top of this inning. And the middleman, uh, well, no, Castro is the middleman here. Barney, the middleman, played last night. Castro, Soriano threw somebody out at home plate last night. Two and zero. Oh. Understand Rutledge trying to get into scoring position. With his team down a run, with two outs in the inning. That's the second time though Soriano's made a nice play on a hit to keep that guy from getting to second. Before it was, who was it? Yeah, he just shut him down. Like that ball off the wall earlier. Yeah, it was well, uh, Arenado. Arenado, yeah. Can't hit it any harder than oh. Rutledge did. I mean, and that really set up the play. Soriano could determine pretty early on that he wasn't going to be able to make a play on that ball, so he turned around to play the camera and played it perfectly. Outman's 3 1 is low for ball four. 
time for our Coors Light freeze cam. Positioning himself, ball high up off the wall, comes right back to him. He gets rid of it in a hurry. Castro with a good relay. Barney applying the tag. That's a good hard ball right there. With some margin a bunting spot. Outland throw to first to see Dave McKay, the first base coach, also the Cubs outfield coach. We were talking with him the other day. He says, We don't miss a cutoff, man. We, if we do, somebody wasn't in the right position. So Soriano's job is to get it to Castro. That's exactly what he did. Barney takes off, and he's going to get in. So now Samarja. And try to get him to third. Barney goes on first move. Throws well on the shortstop side of the bag. Marge wants to have a talk with David Bell. Very important run. In fact, uh, going back to the Miami series, this is several weeks ago, there was a, a play. I think it was the last game of the series which the Marlins won. And it looked like Soriano made a mistake by throwing all the way to the plate. And that allowed Giancarlo Stanton to get to second. But that was not Soriano's fault. Uh, yeah, Valbuena was late getting into position. Yeah. And, and Marmol was pitching, I believe it was Carlos, didn't back up home. So when Soriano came up to throw, he just saw Marmol in the middle of the diamond. So he figured that was his cutoff man. And Carlos just kind of let the ball roll by him because he figured. Not supposed to be here to begin with. Kind of a funky play. Yeah, it was, but it, it made Alfonso look like the guy who'd made the mistake, but it was not. So Marja went. the bunt down and Helton with a long look at third but he's going to get the out at first instead. Roger with a sacrifice. And out goes three to four. Jeff doing it all tonight. It's in a great game. Two run home run and now. Very successful sack but. Rockies pull the infield in. Leadoff home run for De Jesus. Added him his 500th career RBI. Put it in and it clipped him. I don't know if the numbers bear it out or not, but De Jesus would be the guy if I were Dale Swaim, I would want up there in that situation probably more than any other player on his club. Man on third with the infield in, less than two outs. I don't like the Jesus' chances. He won't get a chance because he just got hit by that pitch. The, the Jesus uh, reacted like the ball did not hit him. But Jeff Kellogg was pointing it first, so he headed on down there. Looked like it didn't hit him, didn't it? That last replay looked like it passed on by. Almost impossible at real speed to, to tell for sure. 
Usually an umpire's making a call like that on sound. You hear that you know, double hit. Well, Helton is holding on to Jesus. The other guy's now back in a double play depth. And a strike called on Castro. That was a great Doug Harvey umpiring. We used to call him God. He would say, son, the threat of the baseball hit the hair on his arm. I could hear it as clear as day. Shank foul into the upper deck, 0 and 2. The final, Mike Leak over Alex Sanabia, 4 0. The Reds with an 11 hit shutout of the Miami Marlins. How often does that happen? The 0 2 bounce foul mm. just wide of third. Well, that's a question worth asking. Most hits ever in a shutout. Grand Slam and a two run homer for Raul Abanez, but this time as a Mariner at. Yankee Stadium. 12 to 2. Mariners. The final. Alberto Gonzalez, who started this year with the Cubs, got the final out for the Yankees on the mound. Iwakuma, the winner for Seattle tonight. He's a good one. Hear a whole lot about him. Now five and one with a 184 ERA. Castro with an emergency swing to stay alive. In two and two. Rizzo on deck. Cubs trying to add on, leading three two. Well, I'm going hard in there, maybe to set up something off the outside part of the plate. Castro pretty good. The other way when he doesn't roll over when he stays committed to hitting the ball to right center that's when he's at his best. Good layoff there it's three and two. Wilton Lopez up for the Rockies. The Jesus most likely will be going here. Got to break up that double play chance. Fujikawa and Russell. In the Cubs pen. Goes bounced into right center. A run in. It's four to two. And the Jesus over to third, so two for one for Castro. Well, 
Rutledge is breaking to cover the bag with the Jesus on the move. That creates a lot of room on the right side. Castro doesn't hit it hard, but it's well placed. Rutledge changing directions, trying to scramble back to make a play on this ball. Rizzo with a hard ball right through the legs of Helton. The Jesus scores. Castro to third. Five to two. And this ball, unlike Castro's, is really well hit. It's on top of it's got a lot of top spin sharply hit, but just eats up Todd Helton. Rizzo will be given an RBI single. That'll be it for Outman. Couldn't get enough outs here in the seventh. Time for the Honda call to the pen. Wilton Lopez coming on. Five, two Cubs. Lopez who was acquired from the Astros in December facing Alfonso Soriano runners at first and third one out and ball one in tight. That's very aggressive. The pitcher he doesn't walk many it's sinking fastball typically slider and a change up They've hit hard so far this year. Loaded foul. A frustrating inning to watch from Walt Weiss's perspective in that visiting dugout. Lead off walk to the eight hole hitter. And Jesus gets hit by a pitch or didn't, but anyway, he was given his base. Castro singles as the ball slips by Rutledge, who was covering on the on the play with the Hazes breaking to the bag and then Rizzo hitting the ball sharply but right at Todd Helton he couldn't make a play on it. And Helton, I noticed when they made the pitching change Todd went into the dugout to either fix or get a new glove.
Nice play by Tulowitzki. Jump throw to Rutledge, and he gets the out there. Rutledge, I think, fortunately, didn't tear a groin in the process as Castro scores. So an RBI fielder's choice for Soriano, and it's six to two. Cubs taking advantage of the opportunity here in the seventh where they failed in the fifth. They left the bases loaded in the fifth, but taking full advantage of this chance to get some separation in this game. Rutledge up and then back down on the bag. Three in. Soriano at first, two outs. Sherholtz, 0 for 3. High fly out to left. Gonzalez is there. Big inning for the Cubs. They double their run total tonight with three of them, and it's 6 to 2. Fans with the most unique behind the scenes VIP Cubs game experience is available. Take the opportunity to start your summer in Seattle. What a great trip. June 28th through the 30th, you can see the Cubs take on the Mariners at Safeco Field. Package includes great tickets, first class hotel accommodations, a special Cubs gift bag, a VIP tour of Safeco Field, and a private meet and greet with a current Cub. For more info, visit Cubs.com. Enjoy a nice cup of coffee. Some good fish. Gotta eat fish in Seattle, don't you? Uh, yeah. Drink a lot of coffee, mm -hmm. eat a lot of fish. Samarja into the eighth. For the second time this year, he went eight on opening day in a 3 1 win, two hit shutout over those eight innings. Lined almost right to Soriano. Toriaba's out. The Charlie Blackman to pinch hit for Lopez. Place Michael Kadire for the weekend on the active roster. Kadire going to the DL with a neck issue. Samarja's pitch hit well, but way foul. Rocky pinch hitters come off the bench hacking, don't they? Yeah, they do. Up 
little split piece on him right here. Matt Belisle will get the bottom of the eighth. Base hit into right. The pinch hitters are two for two. Really, uh, the Rockies damage, and they don't have many hits. They only have uh, five now. They've all come at the bottom of the order. Six through nine. Very little action up top. Late swung by Young. Top five are hitless. For all the damage they did last night. Gonzalez has drawn a walk. Helton drew a walk and scored in the second. But the top five men in that batting order do not have a single hit tonight. How did he know he was on television just then? As that sixth sense. <laughs> it was amazing his reaction. Two balls, two strikes. You see some Arju in the century mark with the pitch count. Swing and a miss. He got him. It's the hat trick for Eric Young Jr. Put away pitch all three times has been the split finger, and this is a, just no recognition whatsoever. And just last ditch effort to try to make a little contact. It was super slow mo. Showing some margin with that split finger pitch, and it's been a great weapon for him here tonight. Happy birthday to Hall of Famer George Brett. 60? 60. Probably still at 290. Mm -hmm. 1-0. Fowler outside. Two balls, no strikes. Dexter Fowler. Brett was a Kansas City Royal from the age of 20 until he was 40. Now 20 years later. He's 60. You see how that works? Yep. 20 plus 40 is 60. Well, I would love to ask George. The last 20 years been. 20 year stretch has that been as good as the previous <laughs> 20. It's good to be George Brett. Yes. But became a Hall of Famer yeah, this past yeah. uh, 20 year era. How about that class? He went in with Nolan Ryan and Robin Yount. On the ground, softly hit. Barney will field and throw to first. So Marja threw eight. For his first win since opening day, six to two.
right hander Matt Belisle on for the first and only time in this series. Veteran right hander one and two with a 419. Former starter who has the repertoire of a starting pitcher. Fastball slider curve change. Thirty starts for Cincinnati in 07. Uh, most of his career as a an almost everyday reliever. Mm -hmm. He's pitched yeah, he's you know, one out of every two days basically since 2010 with the Rockies. Fastball velocity down a little bit so far this year. Tap foul. According to fan graphs, anyway, average a little under 90 miles an hour with the heater so far this season. Lines down that bouncer and gets Val Buena. Two years ago, up over 92. Mm -hmm. Hitting guy knows how to pitch. As I mentioned, that's good breaking stuff as well. Strike to Navarro. See where Mike Sosha got the dreaded vote of confidence oh from Hardy Moreno today in Anaheim. Sosha signed though through like 2018, isn't he? Uh, I think he, he is. is. Yeah, he got a really long mm -hmm. contract. I mean, he's been there a long while. He's been there for 14 years. Incredible in this day and age. Moreno quoted as saying, Mike has zero problems, okay? This is his 14th year. Mike goes beyond what he does on the field. He's a good person, good person in the community, and a very good baseball guy. Swing and a miss for out number two. Sometimes teams just have bad years. Players don't perform. People get hurt. Pitchers don't pitch. The problem there is it's a high paid star laden expectation. Their level of expectation is really high. And, you know, people come up with all these arguments that Sochi doesn't know how to motivate him and things of that nature. Back by Barney. Two runs tonight. And more gold glove caliber defense. Albert Pujols is hitting 242 with an OPS of 736. Good heater there from Belisle. Well, Albert got off to a really slow start last year by the end of the year. Yeah, it was about, all right. it was about this point last year where Albert really turned it on. Josh Hamilton's a bigger issue. He's hitting 214. And the latest for him, uh, sinus congestion. Said he's a little off upstairs as a result. Barney pops out. And we will head to the ninth. Cubs leading 6 to 2.
Blackhawks post game live. Pat Boyle, Steve Conroy will break down the action live from the United Center. The Hawks win game one, four to one. Post game reactions from the players and Coach Q. Blackhawks post game live presented by Hawk Ford tonight, right after Cubs post game live on Comcast Sportsnet. Ryan Sweeney now playing left for Soriano. And James Russell is on for Samarja, who went eight strong innings. The outstanding effort by Jeff Samarja tonight. Now the bullpen comes in to get the final three. Two left handed batters scheduled to bat amongst the first three here in the ninth. So James Russell gets the call. Answer is yes. The things come to those who wait. Finally gave up a run. He had that ERA of zero for so long. One earned run allowed so far. It just seems like for the Rockies, at least on this trip, it's been uh, Gonzalez and Tulowitzki when they've hit. Tulowitzki had a big home run Sunday. Gonzalez last night five for five. They win. Other than those two games, they've been pretty quiet. Call strike three on a slider. Just great job of pitching the way he moved that ball. You'll see it there on pitch tracks, the way he moved the ball in, out, up, and down, and finally finished him off with a slider right over the outside edge. That's some quality work right there from the lefty. And apparently brief work. Yeah, one batter. And a pretty good night's worth of work for James Russell. And it'll be Kevin Gregg coming on. It's a closer, Kevin Gregg. Not a save spot. He comes in with a four run lead. He has been terrific. Having average against 100. Face 34 batters. He's allowed three hits and four walks while striking out 12. So the strikeout rate is over 35%. Not the save on Sunday in Washington. First outing since. Cubs are off tomorrow. 
Gale you know, wanted to make sure he got him some work before the weekend. Pretty good. Ball two. That's been his sweet spot out there. He's been banging away at that outside corner down and away to right handed hitters. More often than not, he's been right on the spot. Tugged that one a little bit. Three and one. Be willing to catch more of the plate here with a four run lead. That one laced out into right center. Tulowitzki with a single. First hit from a Rocky. One through five in their order. Strike one on Helton. Close it out here. We'll have one back to back series for the first time all year. Jeff Samarja will win for the first time since opening day. You can head into that off day tomorrow feeling pretty good about things with the Mets coming in over the weekend. The Mets currently tied 2 2 with the Cardinals in the seventh. Mets trying to break a five game losing streak. And they will play again tomorrow. St. Louis before coming here. Nice against Wainwright tomorrow. A ball and two strikes to Todd Helton. Shallow center. This will be out number two. Time for our GMC professional grade player of the game, Jeff Samarja. Pretty much did it all tonight. Go ahead, home run. And eight innings. Gave up two runs. Like the big kid in Little League, right? Hitting the home run. Dominant pitching. Kulowitzki will jog down to second. Defensive indifference. He gets to be the first one in line for snow cones after the game. Five very efficient pitches from Samarja tonight. 349 now his ERA. The one of the Arenado. High topper. Greg will field, but he dropped it. No throw. Inning continues. There's too much time to think with that ball. Bouncing hard off the front of home plate. Yeah, you know, there's some, certain balls you tell yourself, just take your time, don't panic. But when it bounces off home plate and it's that high, you know you have to be quick. It's not like you can peek and find the base runner either. You got to keep your eye on the ball. He was trying to be quick and just mishandled. Another error by a Cubs pitcher. <laughs> Bushel full of them. Yeah. Well, the tying run is still on deck. That's uh, Willine Rosario. As Rutledge with a little blooper 
And it's going to drop down, and the tying run will end up coming to the plate. A run in. That's Tulowitzki. It is now six to three. So Rutledge with his second RBI tonight. So that error costing Greg a run, and now more of a nail biter. Look of concern on the face of Jeff Samarja now. The way his season has gone. <laughs> One and five right now. Could easily have a couple of more wins. And going through a little patch of adversity here. He's got a smile on his face every day. Love his demeanor at the ballpark, but he will be tested if this gets away. Three run lead, two on, two down. And the pitch to the pinch hitter, Rosario, ball one. He's batting. For Tori Alba. He is a legitimate home run threat. 28 of them last year. Seven so far this season. He has slugged over 500 in his short career. Gets away from Navarro. The runners not even thinking about taking a chance here. They do not want to make the final out on the bases. Hockey pinch hitters so far two out of two tonight. Brignac home run in the sixth. Blackman singled in the eighth. Mm. 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 Wicked cut. <laughs> A very bold 2 0 offering there from Greg. And he threw it in there. Here comes a 2 1. Stamp that outside corner. Two and two. And Rosario arguing that that ball was off the plate. But good pitch. This has been his money pitch since joining the Cubs. The two two line in the center. De Jesus will make the catch on its knees. The sliding grab. And the Cubs win their first home series of the season, 6 3, the final. Well, what a night by Jeff Samarja. A little help from the friends, a little drama at the end, but all's well and ends well. well. Kevin Gregg went right after him, even on that 2 2 pitch, threw it right down the middle, and it was hit hard, but for the final out of the night. Well, you know, he's a guy who's pitching with a lot of confidence, you know. Carried a zero ERA into this outing, and the one that got me was that 2-0 fastball. That was a little bold. He got away with it. He got him back into the count. So for JD and our crew, led by John Walsh, Tom Benjaminson, Tanner Anderson, Mark Harper, Jim Cornell Jr., Paula Ascroba, Len Casper from Wrigley Field. Your final tonight: the Cubs six, the Rockies three. We're back with you Saturday, 11.30 for the pregame noon for the game time. Mets and Cubs. We're not done yet. Up next, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Cubs postgame live.